Hi, and welcome back. So the benefits of resistance training are well documented, but what is the right type of exercise for you? What types of exercise can you do to ultimately extend your health span and then your lifespan? Let's jump into it and let's find out what kind of resistance training is going to be right for you. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Dr. Mandy Hagstrom of the University of New South Wales in Sydney and published in The Conversation, where she covers the type of exercise and intensity levels required for extending your health span and how you may be wasting your time if you don't know your individual one rep max. Let's assume you either don't lift weights as part of your exercise longevity regime or you do lift weights, but you aren't sure if you're doing it correctly. Correctly as in the type of weightlifting you need to achieve a specific goal. And part of your research may include checking videos on YouTube or influencers on Instagram, etc. But as with most things that don't have a clear cut answer, you may end up becoming confused and even hesitant to want to look any deeper. Well, don't worry because you are not alone. The author of this piece, Dr. Mandy Hagstrom, is an exercise scientist at the University of New South Wales and a former national Olympic weightlifting champion who now researches resistance training, also known as lifting weights. She says that research suggests lifting smaller weights and doing more repetitions or in gym parlance reps can have a role to play, but it all depends on your goals. In short, if your goal is to build serious strength and bone density, lifting heavy is an efficient way to do it. But if you can't lift heavy or it's just not your thing, don't think lifting lighter weights is a complete waste of time because it is not. As we age, the density of our bones reduces. This leaves us open to developing diseases such as osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is a health condition that weakens the bones, making them fragile and more likely to break. It develops slowly over several years and is often only diagnosed when a fall or sudden impact actually causes a bone to break. Weight or resistance training is a way to increase bone density and fend off osteoporosis. Now, what's heavy for one person may be a piece of cake for another. So how do you work out what is heavy for you? In resistance training, the load or the heaviness of a weight is often expressed as a percentage of your repetition maximum, frequently shortened to 1RM or 1 rep max. A 1 rep max is the heaviest weight you can lift successfully once, so you are too weak to be able to lift it correctly twice, around 80% of your one rep max is often defined as high intensity or lifting heavy. Now this will be different depending on the muscle groups you're using. Exercise using larger muscle groups such as the chest when bench pressing will have a higher one rep max than bicep curls. This is because your biceps are small in comparison to the size of your chest. Around 40% or less of your one rep max is often defined as low intensity. In other words, lifting 80% of your one rep max would allow you to do around eight reps. Some estimates predict you could do approximately 20 reps at 60% of your one rep max. Of course, this varies ever so slightly depending on the person. To do considerably more or less would suggest that you're not gaining any real benefit and you either need to work harder or recalculate your one rep maximum. Now, it's worth remembering that not everyone can lift heavy, maybe due to age or an injury or just being new to resistance training. Remember, nobody, not even Arnold Schwarzenegger, crushed it the first day that he went to the gym. Although you may not be able to lift heavy now, it doesn't mean this will always be the case. The key thing to remember is that if you're going to train at a lower intensity, say 40%, of your one rep max, you will need to do a lot of reps to gain any positive benefit. Now you have to plan for this. You can't just guess. 
So lifting weights that range from 40 to 80% of your one rep max has been shown to stimulate improvements in muscle mass. This is known as hypertrophy. However, research also shows lifting at higher loads is needed to maximize improvements in muscular strength. High intensity exercise is probably the most effective type of exercise for maintaining and improving bone health. Research has shown the best approach for bone health is to combine high intensity resistance training and high impact training. Impact training is defined as an exercise where both feet leave the ground at the same time, such as a burpee or a box jump. Research has shown that participation in high rep, low intensity exercises, such as body pump classes, may offset age related reductions in lumbar spine bone mineral density. This is known as osteopenia. Osteopenia is a loss of bone mineral density that weakens the bones. It's most common in people over 50, especially women. Osteopenia has no signs or symptoms, but a painless screening test can measure your bone strength. Research also shows that if you're lifting weights, muscular failure is likely required to elicit muscle growth. In other words, you will need to lift all the way to exhaustion or, as we say, failure. Lifting heavy weights gets you the same benefit, but without needing to go all the way to failure. But what about burning calories to aid in weight loss? On average, a one hour low intensity resistance training session may burn around 300 calories. A heavy session with longer rest periods equates to roughly the same calorie burn as a higher rep session with less rest. There may also be sex differences in the way in which older men and older women respond to resistance training. For example, older men may benefit from high intensity programs where older women may actually benefit from higher volume programs. That's programs with more repetitions. The truth is it is uncomfortable to do low load, high rep training to failure or close to it. It requires a significant degree of motivation and willingness to tolerate discomfort. But in the end, it all boils down to attitude. Do you want to fend off osteopenia and osteoporosis and extend your health span and lifespan or not? Doing low load training without serious effort is unlikely to result in significant improvements in muscle growth and muscle strength. So if you choose this particular style, make sure that you are ready to put in the required effort. Now, there's a number of benefits to using light weights and high reps. Light weights are more portable than heavy weights, meaning you can work out in pleasant environments such as the beach or the park. Also, they don't cost as much as heavy weights and they're fairly easy to store. And for many people, they're not as intimidating as heavy metal weights are. When you consider or decide on your goal, it does matter what you do and how you do it, but probably not as much as you think. If an influencer on YouTube or Instagram or even a fellow gym goer is adamant that their way is the best or the only way, you should question this with healthy skepticism. They are not you and they do not have your exact goals or your specific limitations. And there is more likely than not more than one way for you to achieve the outcome that you're actually after. Whether you choose heavy weights and low reps or light rates and high reps, the most important thing is to actually do something. Resistance training improves bone density and either maintains or grows muscle. This will mitigate the effects of osteopenia, osteoporosis and sarcopenia, diseases of aging that lead to frailty, lack of mobility, falls, broken bones and ultimately unfavorable outcomes. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Resistance training for the over 50s is a no brainer. And if you're not doing some kind of resistance training to mitigate bone density loss or to build or maintain muscle, then you are setting yourself up for failure. And if you don't have a goal, pick something very simple like being able to do 20 or 40 air squats unbroken or 20 or 40 press ups unbroken. There are plenty of YouTubes that show you how you can scale up to that particular exercise or there are YouTube videos that show alternatives but for people who have physical disabilities or they have injuries. So there's really no excuse. If your body is able, but your mind is not willing, then you really are setting yourself up to fail when it comes to extended health span and also extended lifespan.